thank you, Senator Dodson. Senator Thorpe. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I wish to speak to the Jukan Inquiry report tabled today, and I want to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners, the elders, and land defenders who took the time to come and speak to the inquiry, but also who opened up their lands for us to come and visit and see for ourselves. I'd like to acknowledge uh, their resistance and their fight and their ongoing uh, connection to country, land, culture and song, which is all affected uh, and which we've heard through the inquiry from those people that it's not just about a piece of land it is about a piece of us because we are no separate to our land and our water and our animals. We are the same as. We don't own them and they don't own us. We care for one another and we protect one another. We don't look at our animals and our land in a way that the colonisers do and that is to dig up, destroy and make as much money as you possibly can in a very quick short time. Uh, that won't sustain you for thousands of generations like it has sustained us, but uh, we'll see about that, hey? So I just want to acknowledge all of those people that were involved, and I also want to acknowledge my colleagues on the committee who uh, were, you know, there were people who knew uh, about the destruction, who'd been personally affected by destruction on their own lands, and there are also people uh, who, who got a greater understanding of what this actually means to people on the ground. Because I think people in, in these places like this, they lose track of what actually is happening uh, to communities and everyday people out there. So it was an exercise for people to gain some empathy instead of doing the training around it, they can actually create some of their, of their own empathy by hearing real stories. So as we know, in May last year, the incredibly magnific magnificent uh, Jukan Gorge Caves on the country of the PKK was destroyed by mining giant Rio Tinto. It sent a shockwave through not only that country and those people, it sent a shockwave throughout the world. It was referred to or compared to the, uh, the Notre Dame. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. It is our place of prayer, it is our place of connection, it is our place to speak to our, our ancestors and speak to our country. The same way as a Christian would go to church and speak to their God. Well, our gods and our, our waterways, our mountains, that's who we pray to. That's who we connect to because that's what's going to keep us alive at the end of the day. During the inquiry we heard from so many First Nations people and communities about the struggles they face around the country, not just in WA, not just Jukan, right across this country. We heard stories of destruction, we heard stories of dodgy deals. We heard stories of mining companies coming to communities saying, we'll give you a four-wheel drive. We'll give you some money for your family. Just sign here, uncle, auntie, brother. I saw it with my own eyes. The con job that goes on in these communities is unconscionable, illegal. 
So I acknowledge the struggle that our people are facing out there with these dodgy deals and the coercion that goes on to, to manufacture the consent, you know, these so-called consultation processes. Consultation, may I remind everybody in this place, particularly the government and Labor, consultation is not consent. The word consultation is different to the word consent, okay? So be clear about that. You have no consent to destroy any part of this country. You've never been given consent because there's never been a treaty. So you can't say, but I consulted, I went to the land council, we had a meeting, we got buses there. We paid for people, you know, the same old story that you hear, the con job, you know which family's blue and which family, so you just get the one that's going to agree. Come on, we're awake up to that. It's the 21st century and there's a lot of black fellas educated out there and we know exactly what you're up to. So, the inquiry clearly showed how broken our heritage protection laws are in this country. They not only fail to protect in most instances, but are even designed to favour the developers and the miners. Well, I wonder if the system's really broken at all. Or is it that the system was actually designed for the developers and the blackfellas come later because, you know, we are at the bottom rung here in, this, in these lands. And miners and those de developers who want to destroy country, they get, they get given this really high precedence and the blackfellas are the low rung. We see that all the time. It's not going to happen anymore. Not on our watch anyway. Traditional owners should be the ones making the decisions over their country. Otherwise, stop doing acknowledgement to countries and getting your welcomes done. The system does not provide for adequate consultation and consent. And the possibility to say no to a proposed activity, the system doesn't even allow this to happen. It encourages coercion. It brings division into our communities and in the end, it is the minister, not the traditional owners, who has the last say on what happens to our land. Hello? The minister says what happens, not the traditional owners. <laughs> Talk about being part of the colonial project. The committee recommends for this framework uh, for a framework to be uh, developed, a national framework, so that we can better protect our cultural heritage, which at the end of the, end of the day is yours too, if you opened your eyes and connected with it some more. The whole process needs to be First Nations led. We need to start putting First Nations people at the centre of any decision making. And we need to be careful of co-design. The word co-design, because it's not. Come on, that's just another gammon word or word that it, gammon means pretend in Blackfella way and co-design is a bit gammon because it's not really talking to us, it's telling us how you want to do it. Whereas free, pride, informed consent, like Senator Dodson has raised and which came through very, very clear clearly in the inquiry, that's what we have to look at, not co-design, free prior informed consent. Now may I also say that Jukan would not have been destroyed, nor any other site in this country would never have been destroyed if we had a treaty in this country. You know we've been at war for 240 years against the first people of these lands. There's never been an agreement to even settle this country. So it really questions the legitimacy of this government and this whole place, doesn't it? 
Until we have a treaty, we have so much unfinished business and it's time to mature as a nation and come on this journey to protect everybody. Thank you, Senator Thorpe.